Good morning, Derek. Um, I'd like to start with uh, you know this. There's a lot being made of uh, the uh, possible relationships between Mr. McCall and the government because of his alleged political views. I mean, to what extent are contractors' political views taken into account when allocating contracts? Not at all. And are there robust processes to ensure that doesn't take place? Uh, absolutely, but there'd be no way that uh, that would be taken into account um, whilst making a contracting decision, a procurement decision. Absolutely not. And in your personal case, did you have uh, any communications directly with Mr. McCall during the uh, the procurement process? I, as I said in my evidence, it's very difficult not having the, the diaries in front of me to say um, how often I would have met with a uh, Mr. McCall. So I would have engaged with him through the Council of Economic Advisors or meetings that were diaried uh, or a telephone. I think there was a telephone call arranged, but I think you've got access to all that information. It's on the government's information release. Um, but there was absolutely no inappropriate involvement or um, preferential treatment to Jim McCall. I think Jim McCall has been quite effusive in saying that he doesn't feel as if he was treated particularly um, well by the Scottish Government. So I don't think that would surprise you. Now, it's well known that uh, there were disputes between CMAL and FMAL, which uh, seem to have been uh, fairly extreme. Now, what discussions did you have with other ministers or what actions did you explore to try and resolve this dispute and bring them together? Because mediation didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I said to the convener earlier, I was very proactive minister. So even beyond my term as uh, transport minister, I re-engaged as finance and economy secretary uh, because when it was clear there were problems emerging in the contract and the lateness of the vessels and potential cost overruns, there was also the risk to the workforce, 400 workers and their families. There was a risk to the yard, there was a risk to the future of the yard. So I was regularly involved in my capacity as finance secretary, of course, uh, um, looking after the finances of the government and the fulfilment of uh, the, the contract. Uh, clearly, other ministers would have been involved. Um, there have been a, a number of transport ministers, but it would have been primarily Hamza Yusuf at first as transport minister and then Paul Wheelhouse uh, as, as transport minister that I dealt with. So, of course, engaged with other ministers uh, to uh, try and ensure that we got uh, a resolution to the difficulties as they emerged. Mediation, <clears throat> expert determination, other intervention proved uh, unsuccessful in that we couldn't get them started because of the relationship breakdown or a lack of uh, agreement around remit or mediator. And then ultimately, as you've heard in evidence from others, no legal basis in which to proceed, which became a key issue in why um, further uh, mediation uh, couldn't have been uh, taken forward. So I was proactive in trying to resolve the issues. And then, of course, that uh, then led to me being involved as finance secretary around other matters, uh, such as in the loans. Now, this